Aloha, everyone. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means? It's time for Hawaii, the state of clean energy, sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. I'm Mitch Ewan, your host for today's show. I'm pleased to welcome my two guests, Noel Moran and Mary Beth Lechak from the Hawaii STEM Community Care, located on the big island of Hawaii. Noel and Mary Beth are gonna tell us about a very innovative program that addresses COVID-related safety projects their organization has initiated to address COVID safety on the big island. So Noel and Mary Beth, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having so, us. I'd like to start uh, because uh, I'm not good with uh, acronyms. So what in the world uh, does STEM mean? Just for all of us out there that don't get this kind of stuff. So STEM is, is science, technology, engineering, and math. And so when we look at what STEM fields are on the big island, um, astronomy is one of them. That's actually the industry that I work in. But there's a lot of other high-tech STEM fields. So ones that focus on science, technology, engineering, and math that this program taps into. Great. So um, tell me about your organization and uh, what does it do? Who wants to lead that. off on that? Yeah, uh, allow me. Um, so Hawaii STEM Community Care is a coalition of a number of organizations and uh, individuals in the STEM arena on this island. Uh, we have um, Hawaii Science and Technology Museum, uh, Next Tech Hawaii, uh, Canada France Hawaii Telescope, Pisces East Hawaii, uh, I'm sorry, East Asian Observatory, and also UH Hilo Computer Science. We also have a physician um, on our group in our group who uh, advises us on uh, uh, matters related to COVID-19. Importantly, we have a number of students that are actively engaged in our projects. Um, in addition to our mission of providing community service and support. We're also uh, utilizing our programs to encourage STEM education in our local community. Yeah, I, I took the chance, I took the opportunity to visit your website and we'll get to that a little bit later, but I was very impressed with this young 15-year-old uh, lady, young lady who uh, developed uh, your face mask, uh, yeah. face visor, and mm -hmm. uh, a really nice video she did. So I won't steal your thunder by getting too much into the details, but. But it was really good to see uh, you leveraging this program and uh, bringing the students in and letting them use their imagination, work with their teachers, and, and, and actually develop a product, which is really good. So she's going to have the entrepreneurial spirit in there as well. So um, you talked about all the organizations but involved in this, but who uh, actually uh, was the leader or took the leadership and founded the, uh, this project or, or this uh, organization? So the, the uh, two, two groups that got together uh, uh, were Hawaii Science Technology Museum as well as Next Tech Hawaii. So the, the leads for those two organizations got together and they started to pull in uh, their contacts in all these other organizations that I described earlier. Uh, so that, that was, the, um, that was the, uh, the, the start of the organization. Uh, Christian Wong, who's with uh, Hawaii Science and Tech Museum, He's all, he was also with, uh, uh, with FIRE, uh, and he noted that there was a potential shortage in PPE. And rather than um, you know, uh, wait for the event, uh, what might have occurred, uh, we decided, the, the group decided that we would uh, be proactive, identify p uh, potential solutions to shortages, and proactively uh, arrive at the, uh, you know, at the product. So uh, those two organizations, they're um, STEM organizations that uh, work with students, uh, were the uh, the catalysts for the organization. So are you all volunteers or do you have paid staff as well? Mary Beth, you want to take that? Um, so I am an in-kind volunteer. So I'm the director of strategic communications at the Canada France Hawaii Telescope. So our executive director, Doug Simons, and our instrument designer, Greg Green, are um, in kind donated to the project. So we've worked on a lot of the STEM PPE development, um, a handful of the machining, and by handful, I mean when we when we talk about the um, door openers that Noel will describe, uh, those were all made in-house at CFHT. And um, our director developed in conjunction with the fire department, some other um, ultraviolet light sanitizing 
boxes that can reuse um, N95 masks and make them sanitized. So our efforts and the efforts of the broader astronomy community have been in-kind donations as either our time, skills, or effort um, from our, our day jobs in astronomy. Well, bravo to you guys. That's really great. Um, uh, and just to get this out of the way, at the front end, how, how are you actually funded? I mean, this, uh, I mean, you still have to buy materials and, and equipment and all that. So what's, what's your source of funding? And, uh, you know, what's kind of, what kind of level of funding have you been able to raise so far? I'll Mary Beth, have a let Mary, Mary Beth, you want to take a shot was, at that? <laughs> um, so it, it really depends on the project that we're working on. So our PPE, there's a, a variety of ways that that's funded. Um, some of it is materials, for example, have been donated. The mm -hmm. um, Pisces organization, which um, I am so sorry, Romo, I cannot re uh, remember exactly what it stands for, but Pisces has been absolutely integral. They're a Mars analog site on um, Mount Achaea, and they do a lot of work in new technologies for um, space mission. So one of the other projects that Pisces works on in their day jobs is actually creating basalt launch pads for potential rockets in the future. They've been pivoting some of those resources and again, in-kind donating supplies, materials, and staff to do a lot of the 3D printing that we have. Right. Um, some of the other sponsors have been um, Hawaii Community Foundation, uh, Christian Wong and the um, Hawaii Technology Science Museum. They've put some funding. Next Tech, the organization that, that Noel is primarily affiliated with, um, they've put in funding as well. On the Keiki Hero side, so that project's a little bit different. Um, we've received funding from um, a variety of sources, the, the county, Vibrant Hawaii, um, Waikoloa Foundation, Lex Brodies, as well as in-kind donations. Um, Hawaiian Electric has made donations to a lot of these efforts that we have for the Keiki. It's a, it's a really, it's a huge group. Um, and we do a lot with um, a little. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. The stuff you've done is great. So Noel, based on, that's a good lead in for you to talk, uh, start talking, tell us about some of your projects that you, uh, you're working on. Yeah, if we can uh, if maybe uh, sh display the uh, the slide there with the uh, PPE, I can I can briefly describe. So, uh, uh, yeah, the, these are some of the items that we have uh, worked on. Um, face shields, uh, uh, very self-explanatory. We identified a, a process that would allow us to create uh, many of these in a sh relatively short period of time, and um, they are intended to uh, to augment face masks. So um, healthcare professionals uh, and other um, service workers would, would utilize this in conjunction with a face mask and it's to, uh, to um, you know, help with uh, uh, protection from droplets. The hands-free door opener is something that allows um, uh, first responders, healthcare professionals to minimize the need to have to glove or wash their hands as they're uh, touching surfaces. So the, the device we, uh, we created allows for the opening of a variety, a variety, type, a variety of door handles and also uh, to push on uh, keypad buttons. Um, the sanitizing sprayer that you see there in the lower, uh, lower left, uh, that was in response to a shortage of the electrostatic sprayers. Um, we had these ambulances that required the ability to be, um, to be quickly sanitized after they transported patients. And uh, the, the team came up with a, a quick solution that allowed for the spraying of uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, into the, into the um, uh, ambulances. And there are two units that are being used by uh, uh, fire, uh, fire, uh, fire stations adjacent to or close to hospitals. Mask comfort bands allow um, mask wearers to not have to deal with pressure around the ears, uh, you know, especially with the, the, uh, the masks that have the loops. Uh, the, Mask ultraviolet irradiator, uh, this is what um, Mary Beth had described earlier, allows for uh, uh, the um, N95s to be uh, sanitized uh, within 10 minutes. So we created a, a number of these and they're going to be on standby for certain facilities where the fire department, for example, is, is taking a look at um, per perhaps having these in the stations. And again, the, the intent is to provide um, uh, a capability 
for organizations to quickly um, respond to potential shortages in um, PPE. So I have, and a, then, I have a quick question on your uh, ultraviolet uh, box. Yes. So how do you know that, uh, I, know, I know the answer, but I want you to tell the audience this. How, how do you know that it actually is working and killing uh, all the uh, viruses on the mask? Could you tell yeah, us a so, little bit about your QA? Yeah. And, Exactly. So one of the things that we, uh, we uh, first of all, the design is something that we had uh, identified um, online. There was another organization, another fire, um, fire department was at, that had actually created something similar on the mainland somewhere. So the, the inspiration came from that. We, we optimized, the, optimized the design and we really wanted to maximize the um, amount of surf, the, the surface area of the of the mask that would be irradiated, which is why you have the reflected surface re reflective surfaces as well as the twin uh, UV bulbs. Now uh, the big question is, does it work? And what we did was we enlisted the help of UH uh, microbiology. They they uh, 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 allowed us to essentially validate the efficacy of uh, the uh, UVC in um, uh, killing the ki killing microbes essentially, and. On top of that, uh, there was a research that was done uh, on the east, uh, on the mainland somewhere, uh, that further validated the efficacy of the uh, UVC in uh, 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 decontaminating or or sterilizing uh, viruses. So there were a number of things that we we um, we looked into to ensure that we took we took into account uh, uh, coverage on the surface, as well as uh, the exposure time, right, to to ensure that we went above what was uh, expected. Uh, to 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 Mac to uh, ensure that the uh, the you know the the material is sanitized. So um, first of all, a little shout out to UH, the University of Hawaii. We we need all the good uh, press we can get, uh, showing that we're supporting a community and solving uh, today's problems. So thank you, Hawaii Community College. Um, secondly, I understand you have a medical doctor that's part of your team. So can you tell us? what he, uh, how he's contributed to, to this the, on the safety side. Yeah, so Dr. Craig uh, uh, Berger, he's a pediatrician at um, uh, Hilo Medical. He, um, so he, he was the inspiration for a number of these things. A hand-free uh, hands door opener, for example, was something that he mentioned uh, was, uh, was a need. So he, he would, um, he, he's involved in the various discussions we have. He would offer information about um, you know, uh, uh, potential pitfalls, uh, things that would maximize efficacy, and also things to avoid, right? In terms of claims, in terms of uh, what we're describing the products uh, could be used for. So he's been a consultant um, with, with, uh, with the design of uh, a number of these different um, uh, PPEs and devices. And as you'll hear from uh, Mary Beth in a moment here, he's also been very instrumental in helping uh, to frame the types of messages that we convey through our Keiki Heroes program. Yeah. Okay, so I'll let you go. I, did, I, I interrupted you before you got through the whole list, right? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, there's one thing, I, one more thing I'd like to share, um, maybe just uh, uh, two things. So the, the item on the very far um, right was the uh, hands-free uh, sanitizer dispenser. And if you go into a number of the facilities today, uh, stores, et cetera, you, you'll find these automated dispensers where, you know, through um, uh, uh, infrared uh, detection, it, it, it knows that your hand is there and it will dispense a certain amount of uh, sanitizing fluid. Uh, the challenge, of course, is that not every facility uh, or organization can afford such a thing. And on top of that, the, um, the refills are uh, very specific or could be very specific to the dispenser. So we thought, why not come up with something that would allow for multiple uh, dispensers to be uh, utilized and come up, come, come up with a, a design that allows for someone to dispense the sanitizing fluid without a, have, actually having to touch the device. And what you see there is essentially a, a foot operated uh, device that allows for uh, dispensing of, of fluids from these commonly available dispensers. And we've created uh, quite a few of these that are being distributed to um, organizations that uh, need them but can't uh, need these automated dispensers but can't afford the you know the electronic versions so I, I looked at it online because you have you have a really good website we'll, we'll give you the website before you leave but it's kind of a Rube Goldberg design in a way it's made out of uh, like PVC plumbing I guess yes uh, painted blue I see you, you bothered to paint it blue but I was really fascinated with the trigger 
of how you actually operate the foot pa 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 pedal on that thing. It's just like you put the push the foot on the pedal and just a, uh, a bungee cord resets it. It's really good. Yeah. So, yes. so about how much would that cost? You know, let's, uh, we said it was low cost. So putting something like that together, what are we talking about? Yeah, there's, cost? that's, a, that's a great, I, if I recall correctly, um, there was a figure of about $80 that would take into account the labor and the, uh, the, 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 the materials for each one. Uh, we of course are, di are uh, distributing these free of charge to facilities that are in need of, of the device. And uh, we're also sharing the plans. So if organizations are out there or individual out there would like to create the same thing, um, you know, we, we can share the plans with them. So it'd be good if you, uh, Noel, if you could just comment on the fact that uh, these are free to the community. Could you uh, make a, a comment on that? Talk about yes. that. Yes, yes. So, so um, our, um, our organization as it relates to PPE distribution is, uh, is offering these devices, these PPEs, free of charge to um, healthcare facilities, uh, first responders, service organizations here on Hawaii Island. Um, I, I emphasize Hawaii Island because our donors, uh, our supporters, know, uh, you know that our commitment is to deliver the, these goods to our, uh, our local, um, uh, you know, our communities. So, th so that's the, um, they are, they are being distributed free of charge and on the website, um, you can uh, click on PPE and the, in the, in the, uh, the nav uh, navigation bar at the top. And there's a request link there where you can actually submit your request for the items and someone will get in touch with you to, to uh, verify the details and, and uh, make the delivery. But I understand that if somebody out there in uh, think tech land really likes this whole concept, that you're quite happy to share the model with them for if they want to do it on the neighbor islands or on the mainland or wherever. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. This this is um, our mission is to provide service uh, to our community, and um, the more that we can, uh, you know, socialize this and get this uh, concept accepted uh, across the state, across you know uh, other areas, you know that that would um, be consistent with uh, our objectives, our mission. Absolutely. Right. And of course, if anybody wants to donate uh, money or in kind, you're more than welcome to accept it, I guess. Absolutely. And we have a link on our website uh, for donations. We, uh, we, take the, uh, we take the cash donations happily, but uh, there's also a need for materials, PVC pipe, for example, things along those lines. Uh, we can certainly uh, utilize those, uh, those items. Yeah. Okay. Super. So Mary Beth, how about telling us about your Keiki program? It's fascinating. Thank you. Before I do that, I just want to give my shout out to the Pacific International Space Center for Exploration Systems, Pisces, whose acronym I could not remember earlier. I uh, looked it up while Noel was speaking because they, they've done such a great job contributing that I wanted to make sure I got their name right. Awesome. So um, the, the project that I worked primarily on is it called Keiki Heroes. And so it's, again, it's an initiative that we worked with Dr. Craig Berger, Rebecca Choi, uh, Noel, um, and, and Gail, and we noticed that there was a gap in when it came time to how were we getting ready for back to school. So these discussions began in June and there was quite a gap. And at the time, the um, Department of Education and none of the schools were really quite sure what the restart to school was going to look like. And so we first went with the, the, the solution that we were all most comfortable with, which was PPE. And we realized that we did not have the money to do that, nor did we even really know what schools were going to need. So we looked for another niche. And what we noticed was a, a dearth of information that was directed directly towards Keiki. A lot of the websites that we were looking at was how to speak to Keiki. And that's, that's not what we wanted. We wanted kids to be able to get the information, but also have it framed in a much more positive way. So much of what we hear about COVID is, you know, you, you can't go play with your friends, you can't go to school, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And so what we wanted to do was give Keiki um, a sense of power to empower them with behaviors that they could do. Wear a mask and what's the right way to do that. Um, how to be a Keiki hero. And so that's uh, wearing a mask, giving a shaka to say hi, um, uh, social distancing, respect the bubble as we call it, and 
um, washing your hands. And so instead of having kids kind of spiral down on how to wash hands, most schools, I visit a lot of schools, everybody has a poster that says how to wash hands. Our poster focuses on when you should wash hands. So instead of washing them constantly, what are some really key times during a school day? And then everything was sort of thrown for a loop um, by all of our plans. And I'm by no means complaining because I'm not a, a teacher who had to quickly pivot from blended learning or in face-to-face -face learning into a, a totally virtual environment like we see. But we were trying to figure out, you know, how do we now reach those students? How do we now reach those schools? And so we've distributed all of our materials free of charge. They're available for download on the Cakey Heroes website. And that was our first pass. And we printed them all in kind printing between you know, observatories, engineering firms in Hilo. We had, I think almost every engineering firm in Hilo doing some in kind printing for us. Awesome. And um, yeah, yeah, it was great. And eventually we've moved into this really fabulous partnership that we have now with the County and Vibrant Hawaii going out this week, I just dropped a whole bunch off at two schools in Waiman. Going out this week is a Keiki Heroes activity book that continues those lessons and focuses on our two Keiki Heroes, Kai and Hoku, who are cousins. And those were funded by the County of Hawaii and Vibrant Hawaii. So all of the printing there. And then through our relationship with Christian Wong, um, the fire department is helping us distribute them. So what's uh, what's been the response from the uh, the end user, the Keikis? Are they uh, do they like this program? Have you tried it out on them? We have. We actually just wrapped up two online social media contests um, with our sponsor KTA, and it was a coloring contest. So one of the students that we have working on the project, Jake Al, he did a lot of our initial graphic design work as well as Yuko Green. So she's an, a noted Hawaii um, illustrator. You've probably seen her books. She's the one that really brought the Keiki Heroes to life. And so Jake had the idea of, well, if we just take all of the color out of one of these posters, it's a coloring sheet. So we've distributed a lot of coloring sheets um, to a lot of elementary schools. And we just wrapped up a coloring contest where Keiki could go and color and submit and um, win $20 gift cards from KTA. So it's, it's been, the response has been great from not only teachers, principals, parents, and Keiki, but also the community as a whole. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Mary Beth, you may, you may want to comment on the, the, the volume of activity books. And uh, I mean, it's an incredible number that we've had to produce and, yes. and deliver. We just packaged 18,000. So um, it was a very fast turnaround and all of the credit to that goes to, you know, the Keiki Heroes team, but most notably Rebecca Choi, our project manager. We found out that we needed to have 18,000 finished and, and printed and, and she found a printer for us and we, they were delivered over the weekend and um, Christian actually stored them in his van, the um, Hawaii uh, Science Technology Museum van. And eight o'clock Monday morning, um, a hui of us showed up at the central fire station in Hilo, unpacked all of our Keiki Heroes materials, repacked them with the fire department's fire safety materials, as well as some coupons, and are now being distributed throughout the, throughout the county. We ended up, I think, distributing about 17,000. We have some in reserve for preschools and other organizations that wouldn't be necessarily hit in the first pass. Through the partnership with Vibrant Hawaii, we're also finalizing a 16 to 20 page activity book that will be in their resilience hubs across the island as well. Well, that could be a and best sell for it on the mainland. You could actually raise money if you... No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I, I also want to add that um, uh, the materials are being translated. So we've got, what, uh, 10 or so languages, right, Mary Beth? That's our goal. Our goal is to have 10 languages translated, and we've got some great partnerships, again, Vibrant Hawaii, the West Hawaii um, Community Health Center, who's offered to help us with some of those translations to really make sure that the materials get in the hands of underserved populations, um, you know, our rural communities, our um, you know, Marshallese and Micronesian communities and, and a wide variety of communities that thus thus far have been underserved to a certain extent. So what, what a great way to get the uh, word out. I mean, have you approached the uh, Department of Health? God knows they need some good publicity these days. And 
sounds like they've got about a zillion dollars that they haven't spent. So we would love to partner with the uh, State Department of Health. We've been, you know, thus far a, a Hawaii County initiative, but um, you can give us a call, come to our website. We'd, we'd love to, to talk to the, the, the Department of Health team. It's a really grassroots effort that we've been careful to kind of roll out slowly and that snowballed in like week two as the, the whole team knows. So, and you know, without Dr. Berger, who's provided, you know, really critical instruction on what are some of the points that we can emphasize, that's how we narrowed our, our scope down in the, in the first pass to a, a handful of really essential points. So what about the Department of, uh, of uh, Education? They, they, uh, are they happy to have these materials in your school? Did you have to run up against any bureaucratic speed bumps saying, oh, this is not approved, you know, curricula or whatever, you know, the normal stuff? It or not at all. So kudos to our CASAs on Hawaii Island because I, so I live and work in Waimea and I already had a really great represent, uh, rep, um, a really great relationship with, with Cass Snelling, who, who newly newly took over the position and what a time to take that over in, in 2020. Yeah. Um, and so I just sent her an email and said, hey, we have these materials, here are some screenshots, do you wanna use them? And she was introducing them at, at principals and principal meetings. And we got the same response across the, across the island. So our department of education on the big island, I, I work with them a, a fair amount in my capacity at CFHT. And they have been a pleasure to work with and really embrace this as well as all of the charter schools. St. Joseph's school in Hilo was one of our very first schools. They started school on time in person on, I wanna say August 4th and it was really important to us to get material to them because our um, one of our college interns, his mom works there and his sisters go to school there. So shout out to the Owl family who were very, very <laughs> early supporters. And I think still are our most um, enthusiastic hand models for hand washing videos. So what about Kamehameha schools? Do they uh, translate it into uh, native Hawaiian? We've not translated it into Hawaiian yet, but we are in the process of doing that. Um, and as far as reaching out to Kamehameha schools, we've hit several of their preschools. Oh, excellent. And well, I, I'd like you, to- got to, Oh, sorry, go ahead, Noel. Yeah, I, I just wanna uh, do a, a quick plug also, because the materials are online and eventually all the translated versions will also be online, uh, the, the uh, information can be leveraged across the state Yes. And also in other regions, right? We talk about Micronesia. We talk about uh, you know the Philippines. Oh, yeah. They can access the website, get get to the downloads page, and then download the information and have it utilized in their community. So the uh, the benefit of the work that's being done goes way way beyond uh, Hawaii Island. So if you uh, could use the YouTube video you're going to get from <laughs> Tech Hawaii, you could uh, send this video out to various embassies and people like that so that they can send it to their, their countries and uh, you know spread the word. So that would be really good. So on that happy note, I've got to wind it up. Believe it or not, we've uh, blown through 30 <laughs> minutes. I really want to thank you. You've done a great job on this project. It's really good. I mean, there's nothing, uh, I mean, obviously you love what you're doing and you're doing something that's really worthwhile and really good. I mean, like I said, I was blown away by that young lady who designed the uh, visor system. It was really well done. So I, I encourage everybody to go to the website. Uh, can we throw up the last slide, which has the uh, website uh, address? And then, um, but signing off. So if you want to come back, let us know. We'd be happy to have you back. So Thank aloha. You. This is Thank Hawaii, you. the state of clean energy, signing off. Aloha. Okay.